Oh my god! Oh my god, that's a good fish. I woke my cameraman up bright and early this morning so we could be at the lake for dawn because tent fishing always seems to be best really early in the morning. We've got to the lake now. I'm gonna look around, uh, try and spot signs of tench because before I set up, I wanna know that there's fish in the area. The signs I'm looking for are bubbles, stirred up murky water, or the lily pads or reeds knocking. And then if I find them, we'll get set up. I didn't see anything or any signs in the last spot, but this looks a bit more promising. Yeah, there's a few patches of bubbles out there. That'll do. I'll get set up in this spot, I think. Whilst I've been getting all my kits set up and the rigs tied up on the rods, I have been loose feeding a few maggots, just a pinch in the catapult every now and then over the two spots which I intend to fish today. For loose feed, all I've brought today is maggots. I found maggots to just be a really good tench bait. And if you introduce them in numbers, you can get past the shoals of roach and rud and small stuff and the tench will find the, find the bait and, and, and they love it. I've never found a venue where the tench don't like maggots. The only thing I have sometimes found is on the hook, maggots might get nibbled off by little fish. And if that starts happening, I have a tin of golden goodness just in case, because sweet corn on the hook seems to last a little bit longer. Also, if I am being bothered by small fish, I've got some worms. The tackle shop must have run out of tubs because they're now selling worms in handy little suspect looking plastic bags. Anyway, I've introduced some maggots. There has been a few bubbles coming up over the spot and I'm nearly ready to get fishing. The way that I'm actually fishing today is with what's called a maggot feeder. It's basically a little cage which you fill up with maggots, cast into the water, and those maggots slowly wriggle out of the cage, meaning that you're loose feeding maggots close to your hook bait. It's a really accurate way of fishing because wherever the feeder lands, your loose feed is all around it, as is your hook. So I'm gonna get this all loaded up. Now, before I fill the maggot feeder with maggots, I've got to put the bait on the hook. The reason why you do this is because if you fill up the cage first, then they'll all start wriggling out whilst you put the baits on the hook. So I'm gonna put three or four, or maybe five maggots on the hook. Yeah, maybe six. I wanna catch a big fish, so I'm filling the hook with maggots actually. And then once the bait is on the hook, I can then pop open the lid of the feeder, drop a pinch of maggies in there, and then close it up. Perfect. Now it's quite important when you're doing this style of fishing to keep your casting as accurate as you can get it. I'm not saying you have to be a perfect caster straight away, but you will notice your catch rate definitely going up if you're able to cast that feeder out to pretty much the same area each time. This is because each time the feeder goes in, it's a small amount of maggots going into the swim, drawing more fish into the area. If I did one cast here, then one cast there, then one really far and then one really short, I'm kind of just spreading bait around everywhere, which doesn't really help. The aim of feeder fishing like this is to keep it plopping in, same spot, building up the swim, drawing more and more, hopefully tench into the area and accurate casting does help with that. If I was on a big lake, fishing quite far out, I'd put the line into the line clip so that I could get the same distance each time. But today, I'm on a really small pond and accurately casting under arm is pretty easy without the clip.
Oh my god. Oh my god, that's a good fish. My rod. My rod. What a bite. Crikey. That rod was absolutely bent double. There we go. The plan has come together almost instantly. We've been here fishing for probably 10 minutes and I've caught myself my first tench of the day. Tench are a very distinctive species. They're not easily uh, muddled up with other fish because they look nothing like anything else in fresh water. First of all, they're bright green. They've got a very vivid orangey red eye. And uh, yeah, they just don't really look like anything else. So it's not hard to tell when you've caught one. Rigs for this session are obviously both maggot feeders. I've set up two different styles just because I wanted to show you guys both styles. Personally, I quite like the inline setup where you have the maggot feeder running on your line, a speed bead underneath, which is what uh, stops the feeder from sliding further down. And also you loop your hook link to, and then a relatively short hook link. This is about three inches and a size 10 hook. The inline setup for me works perfectly. Uh, I don't really find myself needing to use anything else. However, sometimes at long range, especially when you're trying to cast further and use maybe a bigger feeder, you might want to set it up like this. This is a helicopter rig where at the end of the setup is the feeder tied onto the line, but then suspended above it, locked between two float stops, is a swivel holding your hook link. This just means that the weight is at the end, the, um, the rig kind of spins around behind it and stays out the way and it's a little more aerodynamic. I tend to find when you're fishing at long range, let's say I was on a big lake and this was a massive feeder, I was fishing with big rods launching them out. This setup just tends to cast that little bit more accurately and a little bit further. The swivel that I've used there is actually a specialist heli swivel. Uh, heli being short for helicopter because it's used on helicopter rigs. That swivel has a little uh, like rubber sleeve covering a crook and that means you can push it back and loop on and loop off rigs, uh, like different rigs easily. It just means you can change them quite simply. Because you do find after a few fish, sometimes the line is a little bit tangled up or it's damaged because you've reeled a fish through some weeds or whatever. And sometimes the hook just goes blunt. You need to put a new hook link on or tie a new hook up. Uh, so the heli swivel on it enables you to change the hook link easy. On a lake like this, because I'm fishing quite close in, normally I would be using the, the inline setup. It's just a little bit simpler to tie up. You need, you need slightly less components. Uh, it's just easier really uh, but like I say I tied the other one up because I wanted to show you guys what you'd use if maybe you were on a big lake and you're casting a bit further oh, oh. fish on what is it Crikey, <laughs> it's a tench, it's not what I had in mind. <laughs> That's the smallest tench I have ever caught. On today's session, I'm fishing a very small but quite deep pond. Tench though can be found in lakes and ponds of all sizes. However, the very large drinking water reservoirs, I have often found a little more challenging for tench fishing. I normally find good numbers of tench in estate lakes. Uh, day ticket fisheries often have some tench. And little club lakes like this, small ponds, lily pads, reeds, and reasonably deep water, all tends to contribute towards good tench environments. You can also catch tench from rivers and canals. Normally though, you'll find more in slow flowing rivers like the fast flowing rivers with lots of oxygenated water and fast gushing currents 
they tend to not really be the one for tench fishing. I think it's because tench prefer the slow moving water, maybe they're lazy, and they prefer to sit in the areas where there's less flow. Like I say, you can also catch tench from canals. Not all canals are full of tench, but uh, particularly ones that have got good weed growth and maybe lily pads around, they seem to just be you know, good places to find tench. Man, today has been ridiculous. I had one good tench early on, and then every bite since has been a, a miniature tench. It's cool to be catching them, because this is, you know, they're not a species I catch all the time, but <laughs> I was expecting maybe a little bit bigger ones. Tench fishing is, I wouldn't say it's my favorite style of fishing, because I don't really do it all that much. It's, um, it's something that I tend to focus on towards the end of spring and into early summer. We're actually in late summer now, but the reason why most people tend to fish for them uh, during the warmer months is because tench, they just seem to become very lethargic when the water temperature is cold. I, I've tried to catch tench in winter before and struggled. You might get the odd one, but they are definitely a warm water species. They feed far better when the temperatures are reasonably warm. Uh, in, in spring they will spawn and they'll come out, they'll, you know, they'll get caught pre-spawn at some of their largest weights. That's when the records are broken because the female tench get very, very fat and very, very full of eggs. However, um, yeah, catching them all, f all through the year, mid-spring through till September time is probably your, your window, your best window of opportunity for tench fishing. Well, I must say that wasn't an easy session. Caught that fish early on, and then after that, it got kind of difficult, and I caught just loads and loads of little ones. But I think I'll probably be back. Um, the lake's really beautiful, and I think it lends itself to float fishing, actually. I might return and fish with the float in the future. If you want to learn a bit more about float fishing and watch a video where I land a few tench on the float, check out the video on screen now. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.